Hello, bad tempered badger here. Now, I've recently been inundated by literally two people asking me who the raccoon that sometimes pops up in my videos is. Now, this particular raccoon is a very clever cult escapee, so for obvious reasons, we won't be naming any names. We also won't be naming the specific cult, although I will say it is a medium sized one, mostly active in the USA. So, Miss Raccoon, come and tell everyone about your cult escape. So tell me, did you grow up as part of the cult? I didn't grow up as part of the cult. My parents said they expected I would make up my own mind, and so they did not influence me. Looking back, this sounds like my father talking, with my mother acting like a mouthpiece. I don't really know, I won't talk to my mother about it. Mom said she was a Methodist before she married. My father did not have a set belief, he was very questioning of things. Hmm. What was your religious background growing up? When I was in primary school we went to a Presbyterian church in the state I grew up in. I had a private experience, a private outburst, when I was eight. The preacher was speaking and I found myself inwardly, silently exclaiming, Jesus isn't God. The feeling in it shocked me. How did you end up involved with this cult? When I was 14 I had a very bad fever, and started to have out of body experiences. When I was 15 I was searching for answers. I certainly did not go to my parents, who couldn't possibly know anything about it. I discovered the first of many books by the founder of the cult. I proceeded to find others. They were largely about out of body experiences but had much of their philosophy about these things. The group was not a cult until much later. It did not follow the several point guideline of what constitutes cultish behavior until then. I found the group when I was 15. I began to find its books, which mostly talked about how out-of-the-body experiences work. It is a lot wider than the near-death experiences which atheists and skeptics of today are aware. Near-death experiences are actually a narrow subset of the types of experiences that can occur, but because common people experience these very commonly, they have dominated the discussions. When did you start to feel things weren't right? When the regime changed. The old master, the founder, was replaced by the second, current master. How did that happen? He did a coup and kicked the old master out. The new master was a stinker and hid his true nature from everyone. There was a board of directors and he gained influence over them, got them to support him. It almost split the group, it was so upsetting but he successfully blamed it on the previous master. Were there sanctions for people who didn't play along with the new regime? There may have been, for people who were higher on the totem pole and in an area where there were lots more members. I fit the profile of a dissenter, of a traitor. If I had been of higher rank in the group, I would have been purged very soon. I think there were sanctions but I didn't know many current people. I paid mostly no attention to the current master and the politics, the drama. For some reason they started to focus on me, and knew I was indeed a dissenter. They did a formal investigation on me. Did you try to stay? And for how long? I was a terrible member, never able to hold a job due to my health problems, with which to afford the yearly membership dues. So I never rose beyond the minimum rank which is where real membership began. I kept my nose clean and didn't bother anyone. I didn't notice problems for people who were having other opinions than the official ones. I did not encounter such things. After I had been a member for a while, I did know there was a lot of unrest in the group, and I knew that the group was starting to worship its leader as God. That was just unbelievable. I knew I had to leave, and I knew I should not tell them of this. The wheels turned, and I was investigated, I think they were going through old records. I was found to be trying to not pay my dues, and get out that way, after five years my records would be removed. And that was true. 
I received official word that I was no longer considered a member. But it was more horrible than that. They began to hold me under a surveillance that was pretty much constant. A car would park on the cul de sac, making sure I saw it there. It would follow me to town when I shopped, and follow me back. I knew I had to just take it, there was nothing I could do about it. I couldn't go to the police, no laws were broken. They wouldn't believe my story anyway. Police are of no help in matters such as this. How did you get out? I made contacts over the internet at the time that made me plan a breakout. I knew the group knew I had relatives in the Midwest. My mother's sister lived there and had sometimes come out and worked for my mother in the store she managed. The next door woman to us was actually an informant for the local group of cult members. She reported on my mother's movements, my movements, any gossip, etc. Mom told her a lie, that I was going to my relatives, to live. I left very soon, but did not go there. I went to the other side of the continent instead, where I had no known associations at all. The group thought it knew all of my associations, but it didn't. I left suddenly, buying a plane ticket for cash, and changed planes four times in the night. There were not many people flying on them, and I watched them to see if they might be following me. I couldn't see any sign of that. I arrived the next day, and soon went into the local homeless shelter. It was actually a very good place to hide, no one could trace my presence there. I was very worried they would look for me, and knew they would look for me in the Midwest. But I was in the East. I learned the group had members in that area, and I knew they were looking for me in some general way. Do you still believe the cult's teachings? Did I believe in their teachings? I found I still believed in the early group's teachings. Over the decades, the group had changed, greatly. I was no longer following the modern teachings. They watched me carefully because they wanted to prevent me from talking to members of the group they wanted to know who I might talk with, and stop it there. But I never talked to anyone. You still worried they might look for you? I am still somewhat paranoid that the group may not have forgotten about me. The other shoe never dropped, and so I still watch behind my back. I still watch the exits, etc. But nothing has happened since 2009. Someone brushed by me when I was downtown, and said in my ear, We are still watching you. Thank you, Miss Raccoon, for telling that very personal story. I'm very glad you got out. Join me again in the next video, and... Thanks for watching, everyone.